Hello everybody, October favourites and dislikes. Likes and dislikes. Messy shelves behind me, I haven't managed to sort those out yet. Anyway, let's get on with the October favourites. Starting with something so epic that when it arrived and I opened it up, I'm, this is gonna sound really stupid, I almost wept with beauty joy. And I'm gonna start with this and hope that it hasn't sold out by the time this video goes up because there would be nothing worse than everyone falling in love with it and then not being able to get it. I'm pretty sure you can only get it in the UK. This, and I know it's not Christmas yet, we're not anywhere near Christmas, but these things, they bring them out in October and then they sell out and then they're gone. This is the Liberty Advent Calendar which is as big as me. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna put this down and show you some photos that I took of it on my desk because it'll be easier. It's so beautiful. It's, I just can't get over how beautiful it is. I sort of wish that it was made out of something a bit more sturdy and it was like a wooden cabinet or something um, because it's just so pretty and I want to keep it forever and ever and I would actually have this on my wall with little beauty things in like lipsticks and eyeliners and things like that and uh, it would look amazing. So if anyone ever wants to build me a Liberty cabinet with this print and sort of rose gold, dulled rose gold um, trimmings and numbers on the front that I can keep permanently, then please be my guest. Or if Liberty want to um, do a kind of special edition, one of these next year, slightly more expensive, made of wood, can reuse the cabinet, that would also be amazing. Apparently the contents are worth over 500 pounds, the calendar is 150. So yeah, it's a luxury purchase, but um, it's got things in like skincare from Aurelia, which is beautiful, and just lots and lots of beauty brands. It's a very niche, um, ones that you won't have tried before, which is always nice. Gorgeous stuff. I don't think anybody could be disappointed with that. Moving on. <laughs> a foundation love and a foundation disappointment. Now I don't know whether I really want to, am I gonna post about this this week? Yes, this review should be up actually by the time this video goes up. I can't get on with this foundation. It's Clinique's super balanced foundation. I read my full review. I'll link to it below and tell me what you think because I love Clinique foundations and Clinique knows skin inside out. They do skin really, really well. And loads of people have rave reviewed this. Um, people who, I really trust their opinion. But on my skin, it looks all right from afar and I've had people say, oh, your skin looks nice, which is always a good sign with a foundation. And that's really the only reason I persevered with it. I tested it out for eight days, this foundation, um, just because I couldn't believe that I didn't like it. And it just seems to sit on my skin in this really waxy sort of manner. So when you go close up on the camera, and that's what I do for my foundation reviews, I really go close up so you can see down the pores. It doesn't sit well on my skin at all. And I've even tried, I've tried a couple of different shades, so I know it's not a dodgy bottle of it or something like that. Just can't get on. Let me know what you think of it because uh, it really surprised me. Love Clinique as a whole. Um, very few things sort of cross my path and where I think, oh yeah, mm. but yeah. We didn't see eye to eye, me and that foundation. Link to it is below to the review, if you want a sort of before and afters and more of an explanation. Uh, a foundation I have been getting on with tremendously well, and again, I'll link to the full review below that's got close-ups and things like that. The Lingerie de Peau from Guerlain. Uh, it's a new version of this, so if you're thinking, oh, I've tried that four years ago, uh, this is sort of lighter, they've improved the texture, uh, and it's just beautiful. I think they've got more shades as well. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. When I um, had it on for one of the first times, I caught a reflection of myself. I thought, blimey, look at my skin. It just looked like it wasn't real skin. 
Ironically, this is supposed to be like a second skin or real skin foundation, but I think it's so much better than that. The coverage isn't massively heavy, but it's just very clever what it does with your skin. And actually, I've got one more foundation here. It's a bit foundation heavy. No skincare. Oh yes, no, there is one thing. Um, this is the Fusion Ink Cushion Foundation from YSL. Gorgeous. I have it on at the moment, and in fact, if you want to know what makeup I have on, uh, the video goes up on Sunday, I think, for this makeup tutorial. Cushion foundation, we all know what this is by now. The only thing that worries me about this, it's so beautiful, so light, so glowy, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous, I love it. But, I think there are only five shades, and I'm shade four. I reckon I could be a shade three. I think four is probably slightly on the dark side. The dark side, if I had to pick. I'd say I'm quite fair. And if I'm four or 40, where does that leave pretty much the rest of the world? Only time will tell. Maybe I've got it wrong and there are more shades than that, but um, hopefully they'll expand on the shade range because it's beautiful. Tidal Cream, Sunday Riley. Very, very pleasantly surprised by this. Not even surprised, because most of what she does is very good. Um, but this is like a really hydrating, quenching sort of light gel cream. Feels really fresh and gorgeous on the skin. And um, apart from that, has brightness in it. So sort of uh, chemical exfoliants or enzyme exfoliants rather than any kind of scrub, which makes your skin look more youthful, brighter, and more renewed. And then it also has a brightening or lightening agent in it as well. So over time, um, helps to fade sort of dark spots and pigmentation. Gentle enough to use twice a day if you want to. Um, my skin is quite sensitive at the moment, and even though this does an amazing job of brightening, it doesn't sting which I feel is a big bonus. So it seems to be effective, yet gentle at the same time. The holy grail of um, exfoliants for sensitive skin, I'd have thought. Oh, my leg's completely fallen asleep, hold on. Just had to do a little whiz around there and uh, change legs. My leg was falling asleep. Oh, I've got another YSL thing, Fluke. Uh, you know these Rouge Volupte de Shine? I always thought 44 was my colour, but I'm starting to come round to the idea of 47. Look at this. Hasn't got so much um, pink in, I don't think, 47. It's a very posh nude. These don't stay very long on my lips at all, these oil stick things. But I love applying them. I love the taste and the smell of them. And the colours are brilliant and they give a really nice sort of posh effect very, very quickly. So, you know, I don't really care that I have to apply it about 75 times a day. I enjoy applying it. <sighs> Proper lipstick wearers that like something that stays on won't like it so much. But if you're a, a, like a lipstick commitment phobe like me and you don't like the idea that you're gonna have to keep sort of maintaining a very opaque lip and it might go on your teeth and it might smudge and ah, then these are really good. On my nails, Dior's Abstract, shade 522. It's an autumn fall colour. Gorgeous, very unusual. Try to think of, uh, I've <laughs> tried to describe it in my autumn makeup video and I couldn't think of a way of describing it. It's like a, it's like a warm beige, probably. What would you say? Beautiful colour, very unusual, I think. Right, I've got some books for you. <laughs> And these are disappointing. The first two books aren't disappointing. The first two books are absolutely brilliant. Um, pretty Iconic, Sally Hughes. This came out last week. If you read Pretty Honest, had to look at my bookshelf then, just to check. Uh, it, it is the most brilliant beauty guide to everything that you can imagine. So well written. I love Sally's writing. Every Saturday I look out for the Guardian column that she does um, just because she's got this really sort of crisp, precise way of writing uh, and that she doesn't waste her words but you completely know, I mean she just gets it, you know, she just 
paints this picture in really succinct sentences and I, th I just think she's brilliant. So, a joy to read that one. And then the other one, released on the same day actually, Face by Pixie Roo, Sam and Nick. You will know who Sam and Nick are, um, I'm sure. I'm sure you must do if you're watching this on YouTube. They are makeup artists um, who have just built this huge, huge brand and platform um, with very useful makeup tutorials and they're also involved with Real Techniques makeup brushes which is like the fastest growing makeup brush brand I think in the world. And this is like the ultimate makeup manual whether you're a complete beginner or you're trying to learn to be a makeup artist you're sort of having an apprenticeship then there's just loads of brilliant information the pictures are gorgeous and it's written so well it's written you can hear their voices in the writing which i think is really important um so you know if you're a fan of pixie Boo, you need to get this if you're not a fan and you don't know who they are and you're interested in makeup then you should get it as well because it's just brilliant it's a great little um coffee table book as well it looks really good and I'm going to finish off with two books that I've been a bit disappointed in. Actually, one I've been disappointed in, one I just can't be bothered to read. The one I'm disappointed in is Three Sisters, Three Queens by Philippa Gregory, which took me about, it's pretty big, took me about uh, eight years to read it. No, it took me a few days of, of really hardcore, you know, sitting down and reading. And I've read all of her books. Love, I loved the first sort of, half a dozen were amazing and then I felt they started to get a little bit formulaic. Uh, she writes about the Tudor times mainly and is usually uh, female characters that the thing about female characters in the olden days or in the Tudor times is that a lot of them wouldn't have really had they don't really have any say in history because nobody really records that much about them and so I think it gives Philippa Gregory this amazing leeway to make up these stories around them and you know love stories or stories about betrayal and it's almost like I find it it's like my Mills and Boone but history uh, but I sort of feel that the last few that she's done they've been a bit samey so I hope she changes it up for whatever next one she does because that one has almost put me off it was just a bit boring Not a bit boring a bit samey a bit repetitive so I wouldn't recommend that if you were thinking of getting a new Philippa Gregory. I mean, by all means, I'm a mega fan, so I will always get it and I'll get the next one. And if that's rubbish, I'll probably even get the one after that, to be honest. But um, if you're dilly-dallying, have never read any of hers before, don't, whatever you do, start with that one. Go back, way back to The Other Berlin Girl, which is excellent. And I can't get into this. Don't laugh. I bought this because I used to read Jilly Cooper when I was in my late teens maybe even early teens, it was so racy, it was sort of like um, now people have access to dirty videos and stuff on the internet. We didn't have that in my teens, we had Judy Blooms Forever which talked about a willy called Ralph and um, we had Jilly Cooper, if you could sneak it out of the library and get it past your parents. And um, this is our new one, it's so ridiculous and silly and it's all about horses and horse breeding and there are too many characters and I don't really like any of the characters a lot of them are just a bit the same I'm not into it at all and um, I always finish a book that I start pretty much I'm not even going to bother with that sorry Jilly so that's it for my favourites favourites and a few dislikes I'll link to um, the bits and pieces I've promised below and actually everything so um, if you want any more information, if you want to get the books, if you want to get the calendar, then check the description box. And yeah, that's it for October favourites. I shall see you next time and I'll remember to put in all the skincare that I should have put in this time. <laughs>